Welcome back to Seavine. We are at uh, part two of five videos that we are putting together on explaining why Seavine stopped covering the tribunals in Guantanamo Bay in, in Gitmo. And I am going to go over, as in part two, something that is really shocking. And I've really been holding off in doing this because I just, I don't know, getting up the nerve to do it because nobody else is putting any of this stuff out there and, you know, I'm just one person. But everything that I tell you today can be verified and um, I really request that you please do fact check me. Fact check me on everything that I am going to tell you. Um, what I found today, I found by accident complete accident. Well, some of you are going to say, well, you know, there's no such things as an accident. Well, that may be true. For whatever reason, I found it. And I'll explain to you exactly how that happened in just a minute. But first, I want to go ahead and share my screen. And uh, just show you that if you want to find out about all different types of breaking news, Seavine has a great website, c-vine.com. That's c-vine.com. And we have hundreds of volunteers that help us every single day to vet the news and to make certain that it is accurate. Uh, we, that's what we do, is we go through everything and make certain it's, it's all as it should be. And so plenty, we update multiple times every single day. Uh, we do have a little store in there, of, uh, kind of wearing my Seabine hat, as you can see, and uh, all the different types of shirts and et cetera in there. Please do become a member of our website. That would be wonderful because we've got many, many other things going on on this site, especially the new education part that's going to be coming up soon. But you know what? For those of you that like to have discussion about the different things that you see and hear on the news, Seabine uh, has a group page on Facebook, now has 37,000 members, and they're actually is quite a few of them that are active and uh, we really are almost like family. We discuss everything going on in the news respectfully. We also help each other in investigations. Now part of what I am going to be showing you today, I wanted to bring this up. I actually posted it on the Facebook page, on the group page. Oh by the way the group page is Seabine uh, uh, News Talk. Seabine News Talk is the group page. Um, that I am getting so many notes saying, hey, is this true about what's going on on Gitmo? And is this person there? And is this happening? You guys, there is so much fake information going on out there. It, it just, I want to scream. I want to absolutely scream every time I see it because it is all so blatantly false. So I'm going to clear this up once and for all, okay? You want to know what's going on at Gitmo and know absolutely it's the truth? Go to the Department of Defense website right here, Office of Military Commissions. It has everything that you would want to know about what's going on at Gitmo. It has all the transcripts. It has, um, you know, the viewing sites, <coughs> excuse me, um, press releases. It has the names of every single person there that is on trial. Uh, it has uh, a calendar. It has uh, the new rulings that the judges make. It has information that's going on in general. It is on the DOD website, Military uh, Office, Military of, Office of Military Commissions, website has everything you need. This is where you're going to go to fact check me and I will put this website address into the description of this video. Okay, let's talk about what I found accidentally. I'm just going to go ahead and read this to you because this is posted, <coughs> excuse me, on the website. Um, it's an article I wrote and I'm going to be attaching this video to it as soon as I'm done. But uh, shocking KSM et al, by the way, for those of you that don't know, KSM stands for Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. He's one of five. He, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is the head of uh, all the uh, terrorists they feel was the orchestrator 
of the 9-11 terrorist attack. So shocking KSM et al. tribunal information found in government response to 9-11 defense team. Okay, part two of five. Why did Seabide stop covering the 9-11 Gitmo proceedings? <clears throat> After the world was shut down because of COVID-19, could it be that we are now closer to seeing justice because of some accidental findings? Seabines has posted the link to part one of this series here in case you missed it. So you guys see it, click on it, you can see the first video introduction. But today we're going to go over some accidental findings that are explosive, and that's no pun intended. In addition, below is a copy of the government response to the KSM defense team discovery request posted on March 13th, 2020. You may choose to download the PDF to your device or follow along below as we go over the contents on this video. The purpose of this five-part series is to bring behind the scenes information and pieces of facts for the public to scrutinize. You decide what you are seeing. Today is about our accidental discovery. Yes, Seavine is back to reporting on KSM et al. 9-11 tribunals, but reporting is going to take a new direction. Many have been asking where we disappear to. After all, for most of 2019, Seavine jumped through major hoops and spent a great deal of time watching the Guantanamo Tribunal proceedings live from a special room on the Fort Meade military base. Leonard Bacani, Bonnie Nirge, <laughs> sorry, Bonnie, Bonnie Nirgude, Linda Howick, and I all sat through and reported on untold amounts of hours of testimony sifted through mountains of historical data and verified information from hundreds of pages of transcripts every single day of the open trials. So where do we go? There is a good answer, but let's just say it's complicated. We are now in a position to report on multiple behind the scenes happenings that will be quite the eye opener, but this will be provided by way of verified pieces of a puzzle. In other words, we're going to sift and analyze this together, the same way our favorite letter of the alphabet does. We decided to do this in a five part series because there is much to know. This first attached video is the introduction that we mentioned above. We're private Providing the information to you this way because there is nothing that we are about to tell you that has been proven in a court of law. We are just providing the evidence Seavine has collected and laying it before we the people, the proverbial court of public opinion. Why are we doing it this way? Because the 9-11 pretrial proceedings are still no closer to going to trial than where we were 19 years ago. Okay. Let's talk about what I found. Um, in another video that you are going to be seeing, I'm going to be talking about what happened in January 2020 in Gitmo on, in one of the tribunal proceedings. And I had been going to the, uh, the military, office, uh, military office commissions, uh, the DOD website, to be able to look up some court rulings. And when you see the court rulings, you'll, you'll notice this, it's, it's a mountain of information. It goes how many years back, all in legalese. And a lot of the things that are of any kind of interest, you click on it, um, that it'll pop up and a lot of times it'll say classified and you can't read anything. So some of the rulings and et cetera in there are classified. But I came across something that, uh, well, let me just read to you what it said. It says, Title AE-768A, Gov, Government Response to Mr. Muhammad's Motion to Compel Documents and Information Related to the Government's Storage, Transfer, and or Sale of 9-11 Crime Scene Evidence. I thought, wow, that's, that's weird. So I fully expected to see the, the little sign pop up saying it was classified because especially since it's the government's response, the CIA's response um, going on, usually it is, more than often it is. But no, it wasn't. And it popped right up. And so I'm going to be going over exactly what that is and um, you decide what you think. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can enlarge this a little bit. So 
uh, you can see it a little better. Okay, going back up here. All right. Military commissions, trial judiciary, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. It has all the names of the individuals uh, who was involved in this. And the government's response to Mr. Muhammad's motion to compel documents and information related to the government storage transfer and or sale of 9-11 crime scene evidence done on, it was, was posted on March 13th, 2020. Um, anybody know what they would be doing selling any of the information <laughs> that is actually evidence for this trial? You know, uh, unless this is in response to what defense, how they worded it, which could be interesting. But anyway, timelines. The prosecution timely files this response pursuant to Military Commission's Trial Judiciary Rule of Court 3.7. Relief sought. The prosecution respectfully requests that this commission deny the requested relief set forth within AE 768 KSM, Mr. Muhammad's motion to compel documents and information related to the government's storage transfer and or sale of 9-11 crime scene evidence without oral argument. Burden of proof, this is number three. As the moving party, the defense must demonstrate by a preponderance of the evidence that the requested relief is warranted. Number four, facts. On the 3rd of April, 2018, Mr. Muhammad served his request for discovery, DR 0766, MOH, on prosecution seeking all records and relevant documents pertaining to the storing, transferring, and selling of any and all debris from any of the location of the attack, September 11, 2001. This material was requested on the grounds that such debris is part of a crime scene, which Mr. Muhammad may need to investigate in order to determine the integrity of the building's construction. This information may be used as part of Mr. Muhammad's pretrial and or mitigation case. On 5th of April, 2018, the prosecution denied this request after noting that the prosecution has a responsibility to determine what information it must disclose in its discovery. The prosecution explained that none of the estimated 1.4 million tons of debris generated by the attacks of September 11, 2001 is evidence in this case. Okay, you guys, this is a 9-11 case. How is it not evidence? Anyway, that's not what it says. Regarding the integrity of the affected building's construction, the response referred Mr. Muhammad to the nearly 12,000 pages of discovery provided to you on the 28th of January, 2013. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST report, it also referred Mr. Muhammad to the photographs, film, and other related materials from that day. On the 10th of March, 2020, nearly two years later, Mr. Muhammad filed the instant motion, law and argument. This is number five. The government's discovery of obligations are defined by the relevant rules and statutes. The Military Commissions Act of 2009, MCA, affords the defense a reasonable opportunity to obtain evidence through a process comparable to other United States criminal courts. Pursuant to the MCA, the rules of military commissions, RMC, require that the government produce evidence that is material to the preparation of the defense. Specifically, RMC 701C1 requires the prosecution to permit defense counsel to examine. Um, okay, I lost my place. The existence of which is known the exercise of due diligence may be known to counsel, uh, trial counsel. I'm sorry. Okay, any books, documents, I'm backing up. This is where I messed up. Requires the prosecution to permit defense counsel to examine. Any books, papers, documents, photographs, tangible objects, building or places or copies of portions thereof, which are within the possession, custody or control of the government, the existence of which is known or by the exercise of due 
diligence may become known to trial counsel and which are material to the preparation of the defense or are intended for use by the trial counsel as evidence in the prosecution case in chief at trial. RMC 701C1, however, notwithstanding this requirement, no authority grants defendants an unqualified right to receive or compel the government to produce discovery merely because the defendant has requested it. Rather, the government's discovery obligations are defined by relevant rules and statutes. Okay, so, you know, we can go on through this. Uh, it talks about what they do have the rights to ask for, and uh, it actually brings up some interesting things here. Um, the defense has not articulated a sufficient rationale for information additional to what the prosecution has already provided. So what the, he was, uh, m <clears throat> excuse me, KSM was asking for was for some actual samples, physical samples, so he could have those analyzed uh, to be able to, <laughs> uh, to be able to look at uh, whatever different things. And for the most part, what this is saying here is you aren't entitled to any of it. None of it. Zero, zip, nada. Now, when I found this and I was reading it over, I wasn't really quite sure what it was exactly that I found. So I called up my best buddy, Ron Fleisvig, who is, uh, he's basically the head of media at Guantanamo Bay and <clears throat> the media officer there. And so I told him exactly what it was that I found and um, I gave him the docket number and you know all the information and he called me back. This is right when we went into lockdown, okay? And uh, they stopped, the, the, for the most part, they didn't shut down Gitmo, but they uh, there are no more proceedings from February until well, even now. And it probably won't be starting again until August. So he called me during lockdown, so to speak, and uh, he said, Linda, where did you find this? And I said, it was on the DOD website, um, you know, where they have, they have all the rulings and everything. And he, he went and looked at it and he said, never in my 30 some odd years of working with, in the military and with Guantanamo Bay and et cetera, have I ever seen anything like this? Apparently, according to him, what usually happens is when the defense makes a request uh, for something from the government, uh, you know, from, you know, prosecution, etc., cetera, um, they will usually allow that to be seen, uh, you know, any of all stuff like that on the DOD website, and, you know, for other attorneys and even the defense to be able to look at all the documents. And usually the response from the government, from the CIA, whichever, more than often will um, close it. They will classify it. It's classified. Nobody can see it ever. Well, for whatever reason, this happened in reverse. And so what had happened is it was classified um, where the defense team made this request, but this was unclassified. From the government. So it was in reverse. And so I asked Ron, well, okay, you know, they made a mistake. Where do I stand in, uh, you know, getting this out there to the public? I mean, he goes, is it still up there? And it's like, yes, it is. And he said, well, it's, you know, part of, you know, the public uh, access to the website. Uh, you know, it, there's nothing wrong with you getting it out there. So here I am. Here I am. Now, why this is so interesting is because KSM had asked this, as it mentioned before, once before in 2018, and he was denied then also. But what's interesting now that he requested it again is there is a professor at a university that for the last four years has been studying, has been studying along with a team um, the demolition materials of Building 7 from 9-11. And after four years, they have conclusive evidence, conclusive evidence that it was a demolition. Now, we, most of us, figured that out. You know, some of this, you know, people that are listening to this now will be shocked. 
but they have conclusive evidence that it was a demolition. And so that's going to be hopefully on a future uh, uh, part four of our series. I'm going to be bringing this professor on and I'm going to have him explain, demonstrate, show what all the evidence he has to do this. But can you understand this happened after I found this just kind of sitting perched on a mountain of information. I just happened to come across this. Then all of a sudden this comes out just in the beginning of the pandemic lockdown that uh, this university has come out with these findings. But yet it's being prevented from being presented because you heard what the government, what uh, what the, uh, excuse me, the CIA basically is saying. You don't have a right. You don't have a right to have a piece of that evidence to be examined. Well, I think this is kind of huge because over the entire time that we have been sitting here listening to all the various different um, things of the tribunals over, well, we've been watching it from Fort Meade, uh, VV, via CCTV and it's live, it's exactly what you see in Guantanamo Bay, you know, spending all these many, many hours going through all of this. And uh, you can hear in the frustration of the in, uh, the beginning video that we did as part one, it's like it wasn't going anywhere. Something excuse always would happen to boot the can down the road, so to speak, uh, delays, uh, multitudes of reasons, judges quitting, judges getting fired, judges, you know, various different things happening that would constantly delay the proceedings. And it usually would happen right before, right before uh, that it looked like something was going to break. Okay, so here's something else. This was after lockdown um, with, for, because of the pandemic that this came out. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind, this I found was just after, just after Judge Cohen quit. The judge that said he wouldn't quit when he was hired last June, when he was in the voir dire, voir dire excuse me, um, he, he said, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be, uh, you know, I'm not going anywhere. And then he just all of a sudden quit. Well, we're going to talk about also in one of the future things, what happened? Why did he quit? Well, we're going to tell you some things that happened in January in the next video. So please keep coming back. Watch this closely. I'm doing my best, folks, to, to try and analyze and bring things back together for you. Um, please find it in your heart to donate to the c-vine.com website that helps to um, cover our expenses. And we actually have quite a few of them. When everybody is volunteers, nobody's getting paid. So um, and come and talk to us on Facebook, the Facebook group. Okay, we'll see you in part three. Have a good day, everybody.